Hey everybody, this is Jim and welcome to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. So, say if you had a list of all the president's names and you wanted to store it in a corn shell program because later on you wanted to print out the list of all the president's names or, or maybe try to find out who was the 18th president. Well, corn shell gives you a neat little feature called an array what this does instead of creating 30 excuse me 43 variables with each and every single president's name in it you can put all the president's names in one single list and then access them with an index counter so let's get started always pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh first first column first row name the program a little bit about what the program does introducing arrays a grouping of similar variables a good use for an array would be an array to hold a list of groceries or the months of a year okay now in corn shell when you want to create an array aka a list it's a little different than in other programming languages in corn shell what you do is you say you define one element of the array and that creates the array itself so here is how you would add a value an element to an array you say I have a value I want to put it in the list in this case it's called array name and I want to put it at this location and what that is is a number and it says I want to be so many units down from the top so you put the index inside of a square brace and I want you to notice just like in the definition of a variable there's no spaces in between the name of the array plus the element and the equal sign and the equal sign and the value so to define an and to define a variable you say variable name equals value to define an element within an array aka within a list this is how you would do it you say I have a value Tom I'm going to put the value into this list called child and I am going to put it zero elements down from the top so this in other words is the very top element in the list then you're saying I have Kate I want Kate to be in the list child and I want it to be one element down from the top and then you say I have Colleen I want to put it in the list child and I want it to be seven elements down from the top and yes it's perfectly okay to skip elements two through six now here's where arrays become very useful see I just defined every single month and a couple things I want to show you about this number one you do not have to start with zero for your first index in this case I said I have the value of January I want to assign it to a list called month and I'm going to put it one element down from the top I have a list I have an element called August a value called August excuse me I'm going to put it in the list called month and I'm going to put it eight elements down from the top so you do not have to start your element counting with the very top element which is index zero the other thing I want you to notice is right here you have two commands on one line you're assigning January to one element down from the top and you're assigning February to two elements down from the top how can you put two commands on one line while well, you put in a semicolon when corn shell sees a semicolon that's outside of a quote double quote it says okay this is the end of one command and whatever it is after it is the beginning of the next so as you can see this becomes a really useful way to store related information 
And later on, when you learn how to, when we learn how to go through loops and iterate in increase and decrease values of counters, you'll see how easy it is to access any piece of information within this list called month. That's in a future lesson. As a side note, you ever wonder why December, DEC, meaning 10, is the 12th month, October, OCT, 8, is the 10th month, and SEPT, 7, is the 9th month? Well, what actually that had to do with was the Romans only had 10 months, and the last month was December. Two months during the winter, they didn't count at all. Something to do with cows breeding or something like that that I don't understand, but they only had 10 months, and the last month was called December. We've added two months somewhere in the mix, and so that's why the 12th month is December, even though DEC means 10. Okay, so how do you get a value out of, out of a list? Well, it, how do you get a value out of a variable? What you do is you give it the variable name, and you precede it by a dollar sign. Well, getting the, the value from a list is very similar. However, there's one little gotcha. Whenever a dollar sign, whenever you have a dollar sign, corn shell says, okay, whatever immediately comes after is what I'm going to try to find the value of. Well, in corn shell, when you see a dollar, when the corn shell sees a dollar sign, it says it automatically assumes that what comes after it is going to be a variable. So right here, it's going to try to find a variable called month because that's going to be the end of the variable name. Because as you recall, variables are only made up of letters, numbers, and underscores. So as, as soon as it sees that open brace, it's going to say, OK, that's obviously the end of this variable name. So let's try to find a variable called month and substitute the value in. So if instead you want to find the value of month square brace 7 square brace, or the seventh element down from the top in the list called month, what you do is you put square, squiggly braces around what you want to find. Otherwise, like I said, corn shell will try to find a variable named month and substitute the value in right here. Because corn shell automatically assumes every time it sees a dollar sign, what comes after it is going to be a variable instead of a list element. So an example here is this print statement. Print the fifth month is dollar sign squiggly brace month square brace five square brace squiggly month. So what that says is that corn shell will now try to find the value of the fifth element from the top of the list month. And if you want to print out all the values within a list, you put in an asterisk inside of that element location. So this right here goes out, causes corn shell to go to the list called month and go five elements down from the top and get the value and put it in right here. This one says go to list month, get me all the values, and put it in right here. And it will space separate it. So let's take a look and run this program. Once again, change mod user plus execute arrays dot ksh. You gotta make the program executable before you can run it. And then let's actually run the program. Okay. So the first thing we did, okay, so the first thing we did was to print the value of the index. Let's take a look at the source code. And as you can see, index is dollar sign index. It went to index, found the value of 7, and put it in right there. Now, the next thing we did was we said, let's go and print this. So once again, it said, let's go to month 
and let's get the fifth element from the top, which is May, and we'll print it right there. And like I said, when you use the asterisk, it gets all of the elements inside of the array. So as you can see right there, it printed every single element, space separated. That's it for now. And like I said, this will become very useful once you learn how to iterate through loops and iterate through an array.